As I push for 60,000 subscribers, your support and subscription would be greatly appreciated if you are new. The A380 Plus was an ambitious development study released by Airbus at the 2017 edition of the world-renowned Paris Air Show. In essence, this wide-body aircraft aimed to rejuvenate the A380 program, which, by the latter stages of the 2010s, had encountered a substantial lack of interest, leading to a diminishing backlog. The A380 Plus also aimed to offer minor efficiency upgrades to make a possible upgrade for airlines that already used the Dash 800 model but weren't entirely happy and maybe were after something different. But for being a rejuvenated version of the world's largest passenger plane, what indeed was it and why didn't the aircraft formally launch? Was the decision to cancel it the right one? This video is going to be your perfect place to better understand this plane that is so often forgotten about despite being put forward by the plane maker. So revealed in June 2017, the Plus offered a range of enhancements designed to make the world's largest passenger plane in turn a more favourable alternative in the market that was becoming really competitive for long-haul flying. At the very same time all this was taking place, the A380-800 was rapidly losing market appeal and as such, Airbus knew it needed to find ways to bring the program back to life because if it didn't, well, the A380 would simply fade away. Key features included a 4% improvement in fuel efficiency per seat. This was going to be achieved thanks to aerodynamic modifications, including new winglets and flight systems that would welcome new technologies that were not present in the predecessor. The aircraft also would boast a maximum takeoff weight increase and a reconfiguration of the interior, which would give airlines more options to fit additional passengers, therefore increasing their own revenues. These changes, Airbus said, would lead to a better performance metric right across the board. Despite these upgrades, the A380 Plus remained a study and would never transition towards a model that would actually be produced. But why on earth was this studied if, as I touched on, the A380-800 was beginning to fade away? Well, at this time, quad engine jets were just becoming out of favour. It does seem puzzling, therefore, it does seem puzzling, therefore, for why the A380 Plus emerged as a study. To continue with this point, there was little to no interest in the Dash 800 and more airlines were actually questioning the purpose of this type rather than, say, considering to buy it for their future operations. The harsh reality was that the A380 faced declining orders and rising skepticism from airlines by the mid-2010s, who believed this plane wouldn't simply be the answer across the long term. The industry was shifting towards more fuel-efficient twin-engine planes. The A380-800 remains iconic, but has struggled to be profitable with some airlines. Once to be a selling point, its true size and sheer scale did become a liability, as airlines found it challenging to fill the aircraft on a consistent basis. Therefore, turning a profit for such a pricey aircraft became tough. Additionally, there were high costs also associated with factors such as maintenance, airport infrastructure requirements and fuel consumption made the target market for the type minimal to begin with. But with better alternatives on the market, the overall amount of airlines willing to bring the plane on reduced even further. Airbus had spent years attempting to revive interest in the 380 through aggressive sales pushes. Despite these efforts, orders dwindled and production rates were slowing. As a result, with no customers coming forward, Airbus knew the end was nigh, and in a last-ditch attempt, the 380 plus Plus was a response to this challenge and a means to bring a new life to a program that might interest customers. They hoped the proposed enhancements would also address the A380-800's challenges that stopped it from being a success that they had once hoped it would be. Despite the operational improvements, which were only actually marginally better if you really have a look at the stats, the A380 Plus failed to garner any sufficient interest to really justify its all-important development. Emirates the largest operator and subsequent also biggest supporter of the A380 played a pivotal role in this decision, believe it or not. While Emirates initially actually expressed interest in a new version of the 380, it actually advocated for something quite different. The Dubai-based carrier believed a more extensive overhaul in the form of a proposed A380 Neo would be the answer. Their vision included new gen engines. They believed this would bring greater upgrades and better fuel efficiency compared to what Airbus were 
were proposing with a plus. Airbus, however, were hesitant to really commit to such a costly undertaking, given the lack of a reception from any other airline for such a plane. The development of an A380neo would have required significant investment when the market for ultra-large aircraft was shrinking and you only had one airline coming forward expressing its desires for such a project. Without the backing of therefore Emirates for an A380 Plus and with no other airline expressing interest, while well, the project was effectively shelved and never heard from again. Was scrapping this plane the right decision? Well, in hindsight, the decision not to move forward with the plane would by all accounts be the right one with how the market played out, how airlines progressed and so much more. I mean, a year and a half later after the 380 Plus was announced, Airbus would confirm that they would shut down production of their A380-800. This came after Emirates cancelled some of its remaining orders, believing it already had enough A380s and it would be better poised to order a mix of wide-body planes that had two engines to give it greater flexibility for the future. Therefore, your backlog really diminished and the remaining units were shelved. Moreover, the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic also played a role in many airlines cutting ties with the 380 in a bid to streamline their operations by reducing costs. And this would typically result in large aircraft being put on the chopping board. It was unfortunate for us aviation enthusiasts, but it was a true reality of the situation that we were indeed seeing unfold. Since the A380 production shut down, Airbus has been able to leverage the gigantic space necessary to bolster production lines of more in-demand aircraft, such as the A320neo, which continues to advance further. From a wide-body standpoint, well, the success of the 350 program and further development through variants such as the A350-1000 ULR has eased some of the burden on the position of the A380, trying to give customers a bit of an option and a way out. However, they'll never be the perfect replacement for the world's largest passenger plane. Emirates, the largest customer, must find a means to move forward without adequately using this variant in future decades. While the A380 certainly remains a symbol, as it is the world's largest passenger plane, for airlines that did decide to purchase it, it really did come with extensive baggage. And there only are ever so specific airlines that the aircraft, you could say, did truly work for. That would be Emirates. But the reality of the situation is that if you put forward a new development study and and you simply don't have any reception, especially from your largest customer, well, problems are going to arise there. I'd love to hear your take down below on the A380+. Plus. For some of you that are new to the aviation industry, you might not know too much about this aircraft type. Like I said, it came in 2017, and in the week it was announced, it basically faded away. Thanks a lot for your support here on Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button if you are new as well. It's greatly appreciated. Helps the channel helps the channel continue growing. Do take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for more industry analysis. And we'll